Our story begins with Nomura, just an ordinary Chad like me, who can beat up armies of men with nothing but his bare hands. And despite his bad boy reputation, he somehow still ends up winning the love and admiration of every girl in school thanks to his infinite riz and his inability to keep his tiny katana hidden. What the heck? And this all takes place in a very typical Japanese high school with nothing weird going on at all, where all the girls are armed with weapons in order to maintain their control over the school. While delinquent men have been turned into obedient discord kittens at the hands of the fearsome Supreme Five Swords, the five most powerful girls in school, and the only ones allowed to carry swords. And despite this once being an all-girl school, it has since gained a reputation of being able to turn even the worst delinquents into good girls, which is exactly what the Supreme Five Swords planned to do with Nomura after he was sent to this school for beating up 40 students single-handedly. On his first day at his new school, Nomura gets a glimpse into how men are treated here when he meets Kusuo, a fat boy with a Buddha-looking ass head who's forced to act like a girl in order to peacefully coexist with them. But when he tries to warn Nomura that a similar fate awaits him, Nomura simply shrugs this off and tells Kusuo that all he really cares about is living a life of complete peace and freedom. But upon entering his classroom, Nomura immediately has a bunch of swords pointed directly at him, led by Rin, one of the Supreme Five Swords, who warns Nomura that the only way for men to survive in this school is to tuck their sword between their legs and hope they don't accidentally sit on it during algebra. But when Rin sees that Nomura is surprisingly unbothered by her threats, she tells him that he can either exist as a girl like the rest of the boys, or leave the school. Nomura rejects both options however, as he refuses to be told what to do. He then swiftly maneuvers past Rin with lightning fast speed, and pokes his head somewhere I wish I could, before complimenting the girl's bakery, and leaping out the window like a true madman. But Rin proves to be just as wild as Nomura as she leaps out the window too and chases after him, determined to correct his behavior before the end of the day. And as she unsheaths her sword and begins attacking him, Nomura playfully dodges strike after strike, while nonchalantly admiring and complimenting her swordsmanship. It turns out that as an orphan, Nomura was adopted by a sadistic master swordsman who trained him ruthlessly, which eventually led to Nomura entirely giving up the way of the sword. But thanks to his profound training, Nomura recognizes her sword technique as mirrored breathing, which allows Rin to enhance the power of her attacks by timing her strikes with her deep breaths. But when Nomura gets a bit too smug, Rin manages to graze his cheek with a well-timed strike. And upon seeing how powerful she is, Nomura decides to get serious and dashes towards her. At that same time, other members of the Supreme Five Swords watch the fight unfold from afar and are equal parts amused and intrigued by Nomura. Meanwhile, Nomura continues to deflect Rin's sword strikes with his blade-resistant gloves, but accidentally trips and suddenly finds himself backed into a tree with nowhere left to run as Rin seizes this opportunity by ramping up her attacks. But when Nomura's body reaches its limit and all seems lost, he suddenly finds an opening and manages to place his hand on Rin's waist. This catches Rin completely by surprise, and she compliments him for managing to even land a finger, but warns him that the fight is over and that she'll slash a new butt crack into his forehead if he doesn't remove his hand. Huh? But Nomura simply replies that a sword can't do anything against his gun, Nani? as he unleashes his spirit bullet technique straight into Rin's body, sending her flying, and promptly ending the fight. And when Rin then tries to go for her sword again, Nomura effortlessly stops her and tells her that the fight has been decided. Meanwhile, one of Rin's subordinates named Nono arrives to save her precious mistress and smacks Nomura on the head, causing him and Rin to accidentally collide. Rin's mask then breaks because of this, and while on the verge of crying, she vows to have her revenge and promises to one day end Nomura's life. But this is just the beginning of his problems, as the other members of the Supreme Five Swords absolutely despise him and swear to correct Nomura's behavior and make an example out of him. The next morning, Nomura learns from Kusuo that male students are actually not allowed to leave school grounds without a permission slip. And although Nomura might be able to get one from Rin, he'll also need to have it stamped by all members of the Supreme Five Swords, which makes Nomura realize that men here are treated like prisoners. Later in class, Nomura is greeted with a cold shoulder from every girl, thanks to a new rumor going around school that Nomura is a creep who'll do anything indecent to win a duel. So Nomura casually offers the girls some sweets to ease the tension, but they all just think this is part of some creepy scheme of his. Meanwhile, as Rin lays in bed recovering from a fever, she begins viciously hitting her bed while calling Nomura more worthless than a filler episode. 
Suddenly, Rin senses a presence coming towards her room and grabs her sword, only to find Nomura casually climbing through her window. But he thankfully stops her blade in time, and nonchalantly compliments her on how cute she is, and how lucky he was to get to smooch her. This of course completely flusters Rin, and Nomura cunningly uses this as a chance to ask her for the permission slip, which Rin abruptly refuses. But when Nomura jokingly mentions that he could use the slip to take her on dates, Rin suddenly changes her mind, and gladly hands it over to him. Unfortunately, Rin's fever causes her to get a slip of her own, and when Nomura tries to catch her, Nono arrives just in time to find them in a compromising position, and immediately smashes that subscribe button, shutting down the whole dormitory section by section, and activating more traps than a Yu-Gi-Oh duel, which Nomura just barely manages to survive. But his troubles continue when he then bumps into Choka, the self-proclaimed head of the Junior Five Swords, who readies her whip to teach Nomura a lesson, along with Nono who arrives shortly after with the same intention to punish and discipline Nomura for his indecent behavior towards Rin. Meanwhile, the other girls in school excitedly watch as the fight is about to begin, while Satori, another member of the Supreme Five Swords, happily wishes for Nomura to drop dead. But once the fight starts and the girls rush Nomura, they struggle to keep up with his fast movements, and he effortlessly manages to use their weapons against them, while criticizing their lackluster techniques. He then hits Nono with a spirit bullet that sends her flying right on top of Choka. Fearing that Nomura will do to them what he did to Rin, the girls both begin bawling their eyes out, causing even more horrible rumors to surface about Nomura's creepy and indecent behavior. Because of this, the next day at school, Rin points her sword at Nomura the moment he enters the class, while Kusuo and the other girls look upon in horror and disgust, as Rin tells him that in order to protect the school, she'll be supervising his every move from now on, completely destroying any hope that Nomura had of a peaceful school life. Later that night, while Nomura reads manga that was smuggled in, Kusuo warns Nomura that Mary, one of the Supreme Five Swords whose plot is massive enough to have its own planetary orbit, is sure to come for Nomura's head after he defeated Choka, her precious subordinate. But Nomura is as unbothered by this as usual, and instead asks to learn more about the girl they call the Empress. In response, Kusuo reveals that she was a new student that transferred to their school a bit before Nomura, and single-handedly defeated both Rin and Mary at the same time, with relative ease, and even called their power meaningless compared to hers. But upon hearing this, Nomura is reminded of a similar person, who once brought him to the brink of death. The next morning, Rin visits Nomura at his dorm to begin her supervising duties, and even searches through his bag to make sure he isn't carrying any prohibited items. Suddenly, Mary shows up with Choka and accuses Nomura of being a creepy loser who vandalized the girl's dormitory in search of more girls to torment. But Rin surprisingly defends Nomura and insists that although he's a good-for-nothing moron, he wouldn't do something like that. But Mary is already so angry at him that she forgets to speak Japanese and ends up yelling insults in French, while blaming Rin for being too lenient on this human-shaped pig. Those are her words, not mine. Seeing that things are about to escalate into a fight, Rin tells Nomura to go to school without her. And although he doesn't usually take orders from flat shrimpy girls, he decides to just go along with it when Rin insists on fighting Mary alone. Meanwhile, Choka chases after Nomura and begins attacking him relentlessly with her whip. But when Nomura takes off his belt and stops Mary's attack, this causes her to immediately pass out and fall to the ground. Nomura believes that he simply overwhelmed her with his strength until he realizes that he had accidentally dropped his pants and unwillingly used his forbidden technique. Now that's a lot of damage! And after fixing his pants, Nomura suddenly comes across Amo, who in the past had left him on the brink of death after Nomura had refused to become his subordinate. Nomura immediately rushes towards Amo to get his revenge, only to be stopped by a stupefied Mary as she yells that his pokeballs are still out. That's him, officer! And upon seeing the trauma that Nomura's forbidden technique has caused Choka, Mary vows in French to end Nomura's life once and for all. Meanwhile, Amo had managed to use this distraction to escape to a secluded area, where she reflects on how she tried to recruit Nomura to join her gang after he defeated a bunch of her subordinates, but he abruptly refused by punching her, which she easily counterattacked before Nomura had a chance to see what hit him. And despite being effortlessly beaten down by Amo's hands that slice like swords, Nomura still refused to back down until he was knocked unconscious. But back in the present, Amo is mad that something in her that day had prevented her from killing Nomura and promises to kill him for sure the next time. But it seems Mary is already beating her to it, as Nomura struggles to fight off against Mary's rapid and piercing rapier strikes. And no matter how he tries to approach her, Mary is always able to counter his attacks, while staying a safe distance away. And she even manages to land multiple piercing hits onto him. 
Meanwhile, Rin joins the party really late and finds Choka still trying to process Nomura's surprise attack from earlier. And to make matters worse, Rin goes in the complete wrong direction while trying to find Nomura and Mary, all while Inaba, another member of the Five Swords, quietly listens in on everything happening. At that same time, Nomura is quickly running out of hope that he can win this fight, so he desperately tries to rush down Mary but gets pierced instead. Surprisingly, her attack was blocked by a manga he had hidden under his shirt so that Rin wouldn't see it. Nomura then uses the extra reach from the manga to hit Mary on the head, and manages to get just close enough to use his spirit bullet technique on Mary, rendering her unable to go on fighting, and granting him the victory. Mary then becomes frightened that Nomura will do horrible things to her, as he had done to the other girls he defeated before. But when he reveals that he has no desire to do anything to her, Mary misunderstands and quickly grows jealous, as she believes that he doesn't want to simply because he liked the other girls more than her. Because of this, she attempts to entice Nomura with her humongous plot mountains, and although he's as tempted as any cultured man would be, he finds the strength to hold back at the last moment. Upon seeing him control himself, Mary realizes that men aren't wild animals after all. Unfortunately however, Rin arrives at that very moment, and begins violently attacking Nomura as she mistakenly believes that he has once again done something creepy. At the end of the day however, Mary clears up the misunderstanding and gives Nomura her stamp, but only on the condition that she gets to supervise him as well. But when Rin hears those words, she angrily begins shouting that Nomura is only hers to take care of, while Nomura wonders why he somehow slips further from freedom after every episode. Sometime later, Warabi, the eldest member of the Supreme Five Swords, returns from her vacation in Hawaii with her pet bear, and is shocked to find Mary and Rin fighting over Nomura, which they were supposed to correct. Because of this, Warabi decides that Mary and Rin have clearly lost sight of their duties, and that they must also be corrected. So she calls a meeting of the Five Swords, but strategically plans it so that only one other member is able to show up at that time. And thankfully for her, Satori doesn't care at all, and allows Warabi to go through with her schemes of correcting Nomura and the girls through an event she calls the Warabi Olympics. And just a few hours later, Nomura finds Kusuo beaten and tied to a cross. And although he immediately wants to save him, Rin and Mary stop him since this could all be a trap. Suddenly, Warabi makes her appearance from the top of the school rooftop while laughing maniacally, and announces to the plebeians down below that she'll free Kusuo and even give Nomura her stamp if him and the girls are able to complete a set of challenges that Warabi has prepared for them. But when Rin and Mary confront Warabi about how she's betraying her fellow Five Sword members, she replies that they betrayed the Five Swords first, by displaying affection for the enemy, which they embarrassingly try to deny, while Nomura just nonchalantly picks his nose. Warabi then reveals her three musketeers, who are the three fighters she's chosen to compete against Nomura and the girls in her Warabi Olympics. And out of nowhere, Warabi just randomly summons a giant sumo ring, seemingly out of thin air, and reveals that the first challenge will be sumo wrestling. As such, everyone is tasked with putting on sumo belts and fastening them tightly. But when Nomura begins nonchalantly undressing in front of everyone, they decide it's probably best to put the belts on in private, to spare anyone else from having to witness Nomura's forbidden technique again. And since Nomura actually has a lot of sumo wrestling experience, he teaches the girls how to properly tie their belts, but this proves to be rather humiliating for them. And as Rin is forced to endure Nomura's hands uncomfortably close to her forbidden sushi box, she promises to end his life if his hands slip even a little, while Mary watches equally humiliated. And once it's Mary's turn, she begs Rin to do it for her to avoid Nomura's curious hands, but Rin refuses to force her to endure the same humiliation. Afterwards however, Mary is surprisingly jealous that Nomura was more handsy with Rin than her. Back at the ring, the gang is shocked to find a camera crew following their every move, as the whole event is being broadcast live to the entire school by Warabi's subordinates. But while the girls are embarrassed to have their goods on display like this, Nomura is completely unfazed as usual, as he confidently walks into the sumo ring and demands that his opponents show themselves. But when Nomura realizes that none of the three musketeers are wearing a sumo belt, Warabi tells him to look up while laughing maniacally again, and Warabi's giant pet bear leaps from the ceiling and onto the sumo ring. And for once in his life, Nomura freaks the f out, as it's absurd to expect anyone to be able to wrestle a literal bear. But when Warabi laughs and tells him that he has no choice but to fight or forfeit, Nomura's demeanor suddenly changes and he confidently walks towards the bear, as he proclaims that although he's never fought a bear, he's also never lost a sumo wrestling bout, and doesn't plan to start now. And once the fight begins, Nomura immediately lunges forward and places his hand onto the bear, before unleashing his spirit bullet technique straight into the bear, but this is unfortunately far less effective than he expected. 
and as the fight continues, Nomura dodges all of the bear's attacks while waiting for an opening. In a sudden and swift move, Nomura moves behind the bear, grabs it by its sumo belt, and miraculously lifts the giant fat bear up with all his strength, as if he's carrying horrible teammates in a school group project. But while everyone is shocked to see him carry an actual bear, Nomura reveals that he spent most of his childhood fighting and defeating grown men, which ultimately strengthened his physical capabilities to inhuman levels. But despite Nomura's impressive strength, the fight isn't won by him carrying the bear out of the ring but rather by the bear's sumo belt coming undone, which automatically disqualifies it and embarrasses it greatly. Such an unexpected loss causes Warabi to fall backwards, as she can't believe that she lost for such a stupid reason. And in that moment, she brandishes her weapon and tells her subordinates to prepare for all-out war. Suddenly, Warabi surprisingly regains her maniacal demeanor as she announces that she will give her stamp to Nomura as promised but only if he manages to make it all the way to the senses impossible to penetrate, and appointed her three musketeers at each level, along with thirty of her high-class subordinates that all look the same for some reason. Meanwhile, Inaba continues to eavesdrop, and is intrigued by how Nomura will accomplish this seemingly impossible task. But considering that he just wrestled a bear, I'd say anything is possible. And Nomura himself doesn't really seem that worried about overcoming the odds as they tell him that they'll be joining the fight as well. Once the fight begins, Nomura unleashes Choka and Nono onto their weaker opponents, and they surprisingly make quick work of them. Meanwhile, Nomura decides to just go straight to the final boss instead of running through the school, but fi once finally face to face with Warabi, Nomura warns her that once he wins, he intends to make her wear a sumo belt and broadcast it to the whole school. However, Warabi just ignores him, and instead tells Mary and Rin that they are a disgrace to the Five Swords, as their affection for Nomura has blinded their judgment. But the girls still refuse to let Warabi do as she pleases, and unsheath their swords, as Warabi and her pet bear get ready to fight too. And while Mary heads downstairs to stop Warabi's musketeers from making their way to the rooftop, Nomura decides to take on Warabi. He brushes off her shoulder injury however, and the two girls begin clashing with their swords. But as the fight progresses, Warabi seems to keep getting the better of Rin, as she almost manages to slice her in two with a strike to her chest, and also grazes her cheek. Meanwhile, Nomura uses the sumo belt onto Warabi, but the girls adamantly refuse to let Nomura humiliate Warabi in the same way he humiliated them, and begin chasing after him, while Warabi and her bear still lay defeated on the ground. Some time later, Rin recalls Nomura's previous comment about her cuteness, and decides to try and look her best for him. Meanwhile, Mary unleashes her secret weapon, her most expensive perfume, in hopes that Nomura will catch a whiff and fall madly in love. But the girls have competition, as Nomura suddenly has every girl within a five-mile radius drooling over him, thanks to his Chad performance in the Warabi Olympics. Rin and Mary can only watch as Nomura's fan club grows, with frustration written all over their faces, while Nomura walks to school with a gaggle of fangirls trailing behind him. And once class time rolls around, the only subject on every girl's mind is Nomura, and probably his forbidden technique too. But Nomura is unfazed by all this female attention and begins to fall asleep, so Rin gives him a not-so-gentle reminder that it's not nap time yet. And throughout the rest of the day, Nomura finds himself chased by a horde of fangirls wherever he goes, and the only peace he's able to enjoy is when Rin and Mary scare off the other girls with their intimidating stares. And later that day during lunch, Nomura innocently asks the girls why they're in such a bad mood. But instead of a simple answer, they unleash a whirlwind of fists upon him. And at the end of the day, the girls are sad that their efforts to impress Nomura have gone completely unnoticed by him. Meanwhile Warabi, who was stalking them all day, is shocked when even her pet bear seems smitten by Nomura. Later that night, Nomura is secretly watched by a mysterious girl as he chows down on food, but doesn't notice her presence and heads to bed early. The next morning, Nomura wakes up early for once and waits for the girls outside the dorm before they even arrive, and nonchalantly compliments them as soon as he sees them, which of course completely flusters them. But when Rin checks Nomura's belongings afterwards, she's shocked to stumble upon a crazy photo of him and Satori developing plot, which of course shocks Nomura too, while the girls curse themselves for having ever trusted a filthy harem protagonist. They then pull out their swords and start chasing Nomura around school, despite him proclaiming his innocence. But in his panicked flight, Nomura crosses paths with Warabi and her pet bear, who surprisingly offer to lend a hand in evading the wrathful girls by hiding Nomura from them. And once the girls leave, the once fearsome bear suddenly becomes a cute and cuddly companion. Afterwards, Warabi tells Nomura that Satori is probably trying to create cracks in his relationships with Rin and Mary, but for now Nomura just cares about getting those incriminating pics from Satori. 
But to pull this off, he's gonna have to brave the girls' dorm again, which is a place now rigged with more traps than a spy movie. And Warabi warns him that stepping foot there again means risking serious punishment from Rin and Mary. But Nomura says he's got a genius plan brewing in his noggin. Nomura then finds himself hanging upside down over a barrel of water while Rin and Mary beat him like a piñata. But Nomura, stubborn as ever, refuses to let out so much as a whimper. So the girls continue to beat him until Candy comes out, but his clothes are torn to shreds instead, revealing deep scars all over his back. Thankfully, Warabi shows up later that night to rescue him and chastises him for coming up with such a stupid plan. As it turns out that earlier that morning, Nomura had actually planned to get himself kidnapped by Rin and Mary so that he could sneak into the girls' dorms undetected. And after rescuing him from his cell, Warabi and Nomura reach Satori's room to search for the incriminating pictures or find clues to their location, but come up short. Afterwards, while walking through the dorms in search of more clues, Nomura accidentally steps foot on a trap, sending a bunch of spikes flying towards him, but Nomura manages to stay alive thanks to reflexes honed by a lifetime of dodging trouble. But when two girls then suddenly start walking down the hallway, Warabi uses her quick thinking to accidentally sit on Nomura in an attempt to hide him, which completely flusters her. Thankfully, however, the bear's adorable child steals the spotlight diverting the girl's attention just long enough for Nomura and the others to make their escape. But their luck continues to worsen, as Warabi's bear accidentally sets off another trap, summoning a colossal log flying toward them, which the Chad Nomura miraculously manages to stop with his inhuman strength. A few hours later, the trio find themselves rifling through more of Satori's stuff in search of the pictures, but don't find anything. Suddenly, however, Satori's right-hand girl fires a poison dart straight at Nomura, which Warabi intercepts with lightning reflexes, but is still grazed by it. Satori herself then emerges from the baths with her plot completely exposed, and is surprised to find that Warabi is now working with Nomura, who she once despised. And as he looks at Satori's unsettling smile, Nomura can't help but question the sanity of anyone who'd bring a sword in a bath. Satori then reveals that while Nomura was asleep, she took the incriminating photos with the help of her right-hand girl. But when he suddenly woke up from the camera's flash, they had to force him back to sleep. And when Nomura then questions why she would do this, Satori nonchalantly says that she doesn't have a reason and did it just because she finds Nomura annoying. She then challenges Nomura to a fight and heads out to the baths while he follows behind her and admires the view I assume. Meanwhile, Warabi decides to take on Satori's right-hand girl, but the poison dart from earlier is starting to take effect, so she stabs herself to fight off the dizziness. But despite this, the poison still makes her body feel heavy and sluggish, and Warabi finds herself losing the fight more and more as it unfolds. And as Warabi teeters on the brink of exhaustion, she charges in with calculated aggression, only to falter and drop her sword, as she is suddenly drained of strength. But Warabi refuses to go down, and as her opponent approaches in for the finishing blow, Warabi surprisingly blocks her attack by grabbing her hand, and uses a judo technique to send her flying, disarming her opponent and simultaneously ending the fight in a single swift move. Meanwhile, Satori's emotionless gaze makes it impossible for Nomura to predict her movements, allowing her to completely overwhelm him with her mastery of various different sword fighting styles, and Nomura is barely able to dodge her rapid strikes as he's sliced multiple times throughout the fight. But what's really holding Nomura back is his inability to concentrate, when he's got such plot and culture staring him in the face. That's when Nomura realizes that he can also utilize his forbidden technique, causing Satori to lose focus as well, as she's unable to stare directly at him, and Nomura is able to capitalize on this to finally win the fight, with a Chad slap. Inaba, the last member of the Supreme Five Swords, then uses her superhuman hearing to sense trouble from far away and arrives at the scene of the fight moments after it ended. Surprised by this, Satori plunges Nomura beneath the water to hide him, but Inaba knows he's there and tells Satori to bring Nomura to the fountain in the yard. And once Inaba leaves, Nomura immediately emerges from the water gasping for air and asks Satori why she tried to hide him. But she replies that he's far too weakened right now and would die to Inaba in a matter of seconds. And although Nomura brushes this off, his body immediately gives up on him and he falls to the floor. And after the dust settles from their intense battles, Warabi and Nomura find themselves hospitalized in the girls' dorm, with a laundry list of battle scars. Meanwhile, Rin struggles to keep Nomura out of her mind and even dreams about him regularly. So she decides to head to the torture chamber to give Nomura another chance to explain the incriminating photos, but her plans take an unexpected turn when she crosses paths with Mary, who was planning to do the same thing. But since they're too embarrassed to admit that, they both head to the cafeteria instead, pretending as though this was their intention all along. 
Suddenly, Satori arrives and voluntarily tells the girls the whole truth about what she did to Nomura, and they feel bad for having ever doubted him. Meanwhile, once Nomura's injuries have healed, he gets up and changes back into his clothes. Rin then unexpectedly arrives and immediately apologizes for what she did to him, before Nomura has had a chance to put his pants back on. And when she then catches a glimpse of Nomura's sword, she explodes from embarrassment. But after she's calmed down, a remorseful Rin begs Nomura to do anything he wants to her, as punishment for wrongfully torturing him. However, Nomura simply asks her to close her eyes, and as she prepares herself for a romantic moment, he just removes her mask instead, which embarrasses Rin even more for some reason. She then opens up to Nomura and reveals the truth behind her masked facade, which all started when her father cheated on her mother and abandoned both of them. And in response, her mother told Rin to always wear a mask to hide her ugliness. But that all changed when Nomura complimented her on her cuteness after her mask had broken, which gave her the urge to ditch the mask forever, but she lacks the confidence to do so. And upon hearing Rin's story, Nomura decides to hand her mask back to her, while encouraging her to find the strength to someday live without a mask. He then decides to open up about his past as well, and tells her that he's an orphan who was taken in by an old man, who decided to train him harshly and relentlessly every single day. And as he tells his sad story, even Warabi can't stop herself from crying while eavesdropping. And just as everyone is wiping away tears, Mary brazenly walks in and immediately drops her uniform while apologizing to Nomura and tells him to do whatever he wants to her, which he just nonchalantly refuses. Be gone, son! And after a long and exhausting day, Nomura returns to his room and grabs his permission slip under his pillow, which now surprisingly has Satori's stamp. And as he looks at the slip, he isn't able to control his excitement, as he's grateful to have joined a school filled with all sorts of crazy but fun people. The next day, Inaba reports to the headmistress that Amo has left her room, and has suddenly started eating more carbs to prepare for something. And upon hearing this, the headmistress immediately orders all classes to be suspended for the day. Meanwhile on the school's rooftop, Amo confronts Satori about the incriminating picture she took with Nomura and warns her that she's messed with the wrong person, as Nomura is only hers to take care of. However, Satori says that it's too late now and she can't do anything about it. But as she pretends to leave, she turns around and attacks Amo instead, who manages to avoid her attack and immediately shoves her blade-like fingers into Satori's stomach. Desperate to save Satori, her right-hand girl puts herself in harm's way to protect her, and receives a devastating blow from Amo in the process. And as Satori looks in horror upon her right-hand girl, who's actually her sister whom she always looked down upon, the emotionless Satori doesn't know how to react, and lets out a gut-wrenching scream while crying her eyes out. But Amo is simply annoyed by this, and immediately knocks her out. Hearing all the commotion, Warabi and her bear immediately arrive on the spot, and prepare themselves to take on the monster that stands before them. But despite landing a few attacks on Amo, they can't break through her steel-like defenses, and are ultimately defeated instantly by a single counter-attack. Meanwhile, Nomura is taking a stroll around school with Kusuo when they bump into Inaba. Kusuo warns Nomura that despite being pint-sized, Inaba is actually the strongest girl in the school. But Nomura nonchalantly approaches her regardless, and Inaba moves with lightning fast speed to put her sword to Nomura's neck. However, she puts her sword away shortly after, as Nomura falls to the ground. But she warns him that next time she won't put her sword away, since he's already caused so much chaos at the school, and she's been entrusted to correct his behavior once and for all. And as they talk, Inaba reveals that although she is blind, she has superhuman hearing that allows her to perceive all things around her. And with this power, she was even able to determine that Nomura and her were trained in the same sword fighting style, which she could tell by the way he used his spirit bullet technique, which was originally a sword technique. In response, Nomura sarcastically congratulates her for being a genius, and Inaba stoically responds with thank you. But their banter is cut short when Nomura hears Warabi screaming in agony from the rooftop, and Inaba calmly informs him that Amo is currently defeating all of his new friends because of him. As she explains how, when Amo first transferred to the school, she was cold and distant with everyone, but she did speak fondly of a certain person named Nomura. But while she's blabbering on, she realizes that Nomura has already left, and that she's just been embarrassingly talking to herself. Meanwhile, Warabi begs Amo to kill her instead of her friends who have come to protect her, but Amo slashes Warabi's eyes instead, so that she won't have to see her friends suffer. And when Nomura finally makes it to the rooftop, he finds everyone on death's doorstep. He rushes to Warabi's side, and desperately tries to call for help, without realizing that the headmistress had sneaked up behind him suddenly. 
She tells Nomura that Warabi will be fine and points to another fight going on downstairs and urges him to go and stop Alma while she assists the wounded. Meanwhile, Inaba stands by quietly as Mary and Rin work together to attack Amo, but they're no match for her even with their combined powers. Rin is shocked by how Amo's whole body is like impenetrable steel, and Amo reveals that this is the result of her lifelong dedication to strengthening her body until it was honed with blade-like perfection. Once Rin and Mary are taken care of, Amo sets her sights on Nono and her friend. But then out of the blue, Inaba swoops in and bluntly asks Nono if they are friends. And as she's frightened by her, Nono confirms that they are indeed friends, which is enough to finally motivate Inaba to interfere. But as she readies herself to fight, she wonders if meeting Nomura somehow inspired her the same way it did the other girls. Meanwhile, Amo also prepares for the fight, but Inaba warns her not to take her lightly, as she assumes her sword fighting stance, which creates a tense atmosphere that resembles a chilling mist. And with lightning fast speed, Inaba unleashes a flurry of three slashes in a single second, catching Amo completely off guard. But her victory is short-lived, as Amo's automatic counterattack leaves her wounded, and her sword shattered. Amo breathes a sigh of relief after realizing that Inaba's weapon was just a cheap toy for some reason, as a real sword would have surely killed her. But as she moves in to finish off Inaba, Nomura swoops in and saves her, but his presence only infuriates Amo further. In a flashback, we see when Nomura and Amo first met, and how he teased her for being so cute despite believing she was a boy. He even sneaked up behind her to playfully plant a smooch, but his attempt was swiftly stopped by Amo's elbow. But despite this, Amo quickly grew fond of Nomura, and the two decided to become friends. But later that day, when Amo approached Nomura to give him a tour around the school, he refused because he already had plans, which caused Amo to lash out at Nomura's new friend, as she told him that he should only associate with people worthy of his presence. Back in the present, Inaba puts her sword to Nomura's neck once more, as if the showdown with Amo wasn't enough, and warns him never to interfere with her again. But since he rescued her, Inaba wonders if this means he considers them friends, which Nomura immediately denies without wasting any time. But when he focuses on Amo once more, Nomura knows that his only chance to win this fight is with his spirit bullet technique, but that if he messes up even a little, she'll counter-attack him and end his life. And upon seeing Nomura shaking, Rin grows frightened for him as well. But as she remembers how Nomura's encouraging words helped her defeat Warabi, she decides to do the same for him, as both Rin and Mary begin encouraging him to give it his all. With newfound confidence, Nomura immediately charges in, ready to take down Amo once and for all, but she grazes him on his arm and dodges him perfectly. And as the fight continues, Nomura can't seem to make any real progress, and he's eventually forced to his knees. But as Amo throws Nomura's coat on his head and goes in for the finishing blow, Inaba yells at him to dodge towards her voice, ultimately saving his life to repay him for saving her earlier. She then tells Nomura that his fear of defeat has made him fight half-heartedly, which allows Amo to parry his attacks effortlessly. But Inaba insists that if he believes in himself and does not fear death, he'll be victorious. These words remind Nomura of his harsh childhood and how much he's had to overcome to become so strong, which strengthens his resolve to win this fight and avenge all of the friends he's made along the way. And as Nomura prepares himself for round two and unbuttons his shirt like he's about to reveal a superhero costume, it starts to rain. And Amo thinks back to how much she loved Nomura and wanted nothing more than to be with him, so much so that it broke her heart. But she decided long ago that if she couldn't have him, then she would just have to kill him so that no one else could have him either. Nomura takes up a fighting stance as though he's wielding a sword, and moves towards Amo with unprecedented speed. And although she manages to strike a cross onto his chest, he keeps on moving towards her instead of dodging, and finally hits her with his spirit bullet. And although this doesn't kill her, the pain she feels reminds her of the first time she fought against Nomura and was unable to kill him. She then yells at Nomura to give her everything he's got, to make her feel enough pain to forget the pain in her heart. And the two engage in a deadly boxing match, trading punches back and forth, rather than using any techniques, and continue to hit each other relentlessly. The thrill of the fight reminds Amo of why she fell in love with Nomura in the first place, and as she begs him to hurt her even more, she hits him with a powerful uppercut that nearly knocks him out, but Rin's voice gives him composure, and he retaliates with another spirit bullet, while Amo hits him with another counter-attack, and he falls to the ground, but Amo surprisingly grabs him and reveals that she wasn't using her full strength, as she confesses her love to him and says that she finally understands that to love means to lose. She then places his hand on her chest and asks him to be only hers. But as Nomura remembers the memories they shared, he refuses and blasts her with a final spirit bullet, ending the fight once and for all. 
But before the dust even has a chance to settle, Inaba wastes no time and begins critiquing every aspect of Nomura's fighting skills, and proposes that she become his master, and in return, he'll get the final permission slip stamp he's always wanted. But Nomura being his usual self, refuses. Suddenly, the headmistress arrives and drops the bombshell that Nomura has been expelled from the school. The next day, Nomura wakes up in the infirmary covered in bandages, with Kusuo by his side, who begs him to fight back against his expulsion. But Nomura refuses to fight the system for once and gracefully accepts his fate. Meanwhile, Rin and Mary beg the headmistress not to expel Nomura, as he only fought to stop Amo's rampage and protect the school, but the headmistress says it's too late to stop it now. Nomura then bumps into Inaba after recovering from most of his injuries, and learns that Amo has also been expelled, and she's headed to the airport to leave the country. He rushes to chase after her, but Inaba reminds him that he can't leave the school without a fully stamped permission slip since he's technically not expelled yet, and offers to give him her stamp in exchange for becoming her student. Racing against time, Nomura manages to catch Amo just before she boards her flight, and jokingly asks her to run away with him, but she refuses while smiling. She then grabs Nomura, before telling him to warn the other girls that he'll always be hers, as he's lived rent-free in her heart since the first time they met. And after bidding farewell to Amo, Nomura bumps into Rin at a bus stop, and playfully compliments how good she looks in casual clothes. Suddenly, Mary arrives as well, and they both tell Nomura that, apparently, the headmistress was joking about not being able to stop the expulsion, and allows him to keep attending school, so long as Rin and Mary continue to supervise him closely. As such, Rin unsheathes her sword and once again demands that Nomura either coexist or leave the academy. But as a lover of freedom, he refuses both choices as he did before and heads back to school. But as he crosses the school gates, a wave of excitement washes over him, as he's greeted by all the friends he's made along the way, ready to welcome him back with open arms. And Nomura is truly thankful for his blessed student life. Thanks for watching this anime recap. Make sure to check out more of my fresh content, and I hope to see you all again in the next video.